ආයිබෝන් ශ්‍රී ලංකා වරලත් ගණකාධිකාරි ආයතනයේ විසින් ක්‍රියාත්මක කරනු ලබන ට්‍රාන්ස්ෆෝම් වැඩසටහනෙහි මීළඟ අදියර වෙතයි දුවේ පුතේ ඔබ පැමිණ සිටින්නේ ඉතින් චාටඩ් පාඨමාලාව ඔබ මේ දක්වා හදාරන හදාරන්නට ඇත්තේ සිංහල මාධ්‍යෙන් ඉතින් ඔබට මේ ලොකු අවස්ථාවක් ලැබිලා තියෙනවා මේ ව්‍යාපෘතිය හරහා මේ පාඨමාලාව ඉංග්‍රීසි මාධ්‍යෙන් හදාරන්නට ඒ සඳහා අවශ්‍ය අත්වලක් සැපයීම තමයි අපි මේ ව්‍යාපෘතියෙන් කරනු ලබන්නේ ඉතින් පුතේ විෂය ධාරාවන් කීපයක් අතරින් මම තෝරාගත්තේ කලමනාකරණ ගිනුම් කරණය කලමනාකරණ ගිනුම් කරණය කියන විෂයේ තවත් පාඩමක් වෙත තමයි අපි පිවිස සිටින්නේ බජටින් ප්‍රිපරේෂන් ඇන්ඩ් කන්ට්‍රෝල් අයවැයකරණය අයවැය සකස් කිරීම සහ පාලනය කියන පාඩම තමයි අපි අද ඉගෙන ගන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ ඉතින් මම මේ පාඩම ඔබට අත්වලක් සැපයීම වෙනුවෙන් ඉංග්‍රීසි මාධ්‍යයෙන් තමයි කරන්න බලාපොරොත්තු වෙන්නේ so i will start my lesson in english medium welcome you all to the lesson budgeting preparation and control so dear students first of all let me introduce about myself i am ganga madhushani currently works as a lecturer attached to the department of finance faculty of commerce and management studies university of kalania so budgeting preparation and control what do you think about the lesson budgeting is it an unfamiliar wording for you i don't think so because as individuals people are preparing personal financial plans have you heard at least about financial plans simply very simply if i define what is meant by a budget it is very simply a financial plan so not only by the individuals when it comes to corporations business organizations they are also preparing their financial plans moreover think about a country the government government is preparing a financial plan that is popularly we call as a budget so do you remember in november 2023 we were waiting what will the government announce in terms of the budget of sri lanka for the next year so as salary earners we were waiting to see whether there is a positive influence on our salaries our parents were waiting to see whether there will be a positive influence on their pensions likewise the term budget should not be an unfamiliar wording for you so aya vaya karaneya budgets kiyana word ekak pute man hitane ogolonta amaru wachanayak newey mokada oba hama tanama news ahaddi pattara kiyawaddi me aya vaya kiyana wachane ona taram mahala athi ithin saralawama mama kiyuwot budget ekak kela kiyanne moolya salasumak samanyen individuals lavena api व्यापार आयतन रटाक विधि हट राज्य गवर्नमेंट एक मैं बजट पिलियल करना होता है सो एस इंडिविजुअल्स आई विल सजेस्ट यू एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ दिस लेसन एट लीस्ट व्हेन यू आर स्टार्टिंग अर्निंग प्रिपेयर योर ओन फाइनेंशियल प्लान्स देन यू विल वेरी नाइसली ऑर्गेनाइज हाउ यू स्पेंड your salary on consumption on investment what part to be allocated for charity purposes for emergency matters likewise when you prepare such a nice financial plan it will avoid wasting your money unnecessarily so with that little explanation on budgets i will move on to the learning objectives today Yes once we will complete this lesson budgeting you should be able to complete fulfill these four learning objectives define the term budget number 1 second state the aims of business budgeting third 
describe the budgeting framework and the possible budgeting structures and finally prepare sales driven and a cash driven budget. Ethakota me budgeting Ayavakarane kina padama avasana vedipute oala menname igenum pala hatara sampurna kran none Harima Saralai budget taka kiane mukak the kiane koalata nirvachane kran puluang when none a budgets hadane visheshe mapi focus kranne via para ethanavala Ayavakarane sambandava it in I budget Sadan Nikianika Sambanda Obata Harimalas and Padilikarana Puluang Minone Kohoma the budgets Hadane Sahavisha Shema Api Vargi Karane Karano budgets sales driven and cash driven Ekiane Vikunum Padanama Mata Saha Mulia Padanama Mata It in Avasane, may pardon Avasane, but Harimalas and may Sialum Avasheta Lassanata. Vistara Karana Puluang when known. Hold that. As I have explained you all earlier, I explained you budget is simply a financial plan. And today I am specifically focusing on business organizations, budgets preparation process of corporations, business entities. So, dear students, when we think about Sri Lanka, there are 290 odd companies listed in Colombo Stock Exchange. And on the other hand, our economy is run through small medium enterprises. So, therefore, I am pretty much sure almost all these organizations have their own budgets. So, let us define what is meant by a budget. When it comes to a business organization or as a corporation, dear students, you may have definitely learned about accounting elements, right? What are the basic accounting elements? If I write it on the board, assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenditure. So, these are basically the main five accounting elements. You may have heard these accounting elements from your A levels onwards. So, income and expenditure are the By considering these two accounting elements, what do the companies prepare as financial statements? They prepare the budgeted income statement or else we call it as budgeted uh, sorry income statement or else it is called as the statement of profit and loss. Forget about the term budget right. Income statement we prepare as the main financial statement. What does this measure? Income statement measures the company's financial performance, whether there will be a profit or a loss at the end of a particular period of time. Assets, liabilities and equity, the remaining three accounting elements. By using these remaining three accounting elements, what do the companies prepare basically as their main financial statement? The statement of financial position, the statement of financial position to measure the company's financial position, we prepare the balance sheet or else the statement of financial position. Therefore, dear students, if a company plans, if a company forecast these five accounting elements including the cash flows including the cash flows for a particular definite future period of time. Keep in mind for a particular definite future period of time that is called as a budget. Say for example, what would be your expected income revenue, revenue from the sales. 
during the month of January 2024. That is your expectation. What will be my expected expenditure for the month of January 2024? Based on that, I will forecast my profit for the month of January 2024. So, that is simply called as a budget. So, by forecasting your incomes and the expenditure and by summarizing these two, you will prepare an income statement that is called as a budgeted income statement. Likewise, budgeted statement of financial position. Therefore, do you now understand budget is a quantitative statement. We forecast our revenue in terms of a quantity. What will be the number of units I am expecting to sell? At what price? That is a quantitative statement. In terms of basic accounting elements such as assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenditure and the cash flows for a definite future period of time. Do you remember I told you for the month of January 2024? So, keep these main wordings in your mind. That is what? Budget. Budget is a quantitative statement which indicates the planned income, expenditure, assets, liabilities, equity and the cash flows for a definite future period of time. I hope you all can understand. Okay, go back to the handout. Let us read the given definition for a budget. Very simple, budget is a quantitative statement you can highlight for a defined period of time which may include planned revenues, expenses, assets, liabilities, equity is also from one point of a firm, uh, one point of a view that is also a part of a liability as well as cash flows that is simply called as a budget. Budget preparation can be either sales driven or cash driven. So, mama ogulon de kaling kiwa vage aya vaya. Budget te ka kiye ne ka apita vivida vargi karane ante anna pulu ampute pradhana vashen ma sales driven vikunu maada ma padanam karagatta saha Mudal Padanam Karagatta Ayavaya Vidyata. It in me Ayavaya Samban the Nirvachane definition nika Harima Lacey and all at a Matakatiagan Puluang. In English, try to keep that in your mind. That is a quantitative statement. Then keep in your mind these five accounting elements, and that is for a particular definite future period of time. I hope it is clear for you all. Then we will move on to the Next slide, right. What do you think about the budgets prepared by corporations, business entities, business organizations? So, do you think is it really worth to prepare budgets? Is it good to prepare budgets? Exactly yes. So, I will tell you why it is important to prepare budgets. So, that will be explained under the topic of aims of budgeting. Ola mukadhi hitan ne vyapara ayatana me salasum ehmanatang ayavaya idiri kala pariche dekata hadan no nida. Budgets hadaneka kale yana vadakne eni sava shayda. Api balamu ay budgets hadan na. So, once again I will move on to the whiteboard. Now think you are the management accountant of Coca Cola. Coca Cola is a famous uh, beverage brand in the world. So, you are the management accountant of the Sri Lankan, one of the Sri Lankan manufacturing companies. So, as I have defined you earlier what is meant by a budget. Simply I will take 
budgeted income statement. What does the budgeted income statement include? Your planned revenues, expenditures and the expected profit. So as the management accountant, let us assume that you are preparing your budgeted income statement for the month ended 31st January 2024. So you will indicate your expected revenue for 2024 and also your expected expenses and finally your profit. So I am not explaining in detail. So I will extract one component the revenue. Simply just think for the month ended 2024 January you are expecting your sales revenue as 100,000 rupees. Just a simple example, right? 100,000 rupees. You are expecting to generate this revenue. So that is your plan. That is your budget. And actually, assume now the time is past and actually you come to the real situation and when you come to the end of January 2024, actually, just assume you have ended up with 50,000 worth of a sales revenue. My God, what has been happened? Can you see? Your expectation is to earn 100,000 worth of a sales revenue. But unfortunately, you have ended up with 50,000 rupees worth of sales revenue. A bad difference, right? The difference is bad. It is not good for you. So this is called as simply Lamai as an unfavorable variance, as an unfavorable variance. Now you understood that there is an unfavorable variance in terms of my performance because dear students you had a budget you identified this unfavorable variance because you had a plan otherwise do you have anything to compare your actuals no therefore keep in mind budgets act as a plan itself budgets act as a plan itself where you can compare your actuals and you can identify any difference, favorable or unfavorable variances. If you did not have a budget, there is nothing for you to compare. Did you get my point? And from this point onwards, as the management accountant who is responsible, would you stop from here? Would you stop from here? No. What would you do? There is a bad situation here. You analyze. You need to analyze actually what has been happened. Why there is this kind of an unfavorable variance? Sometimes you will have to discuss with the other senior managers. Further analyze. And say you identify a reason. Mm. I found the reason why my sales revenue actually has been reduced because the product demand has been decreased. The product demand has been decreased as the reason that is what you identify. Would you stop from there? No, because you need to make sure that in the next time, in the next time, this kind of an issue won't be happen. You should prevent this kind of an default, this kind of a problem for the next time. Therefore, you need to further analyze and once after you identified that the demand has been decreased because 
the flavor of the product has been changed in the market. Normally the flavor of cork, current flavor of cork is highly demanded by the customers. Normally it is not being changed as well, but for this example just think the flavor of the cork you have released to the market has been changed therefore customers have not preferred for that and they have not demanded the product. The real problem for having this unfavorable variance now you captured, now you identified, then would you stop from there? No, you will find out a solution for this, you will find out a solution for this. You will further discuss with your managers and you identify, just assume right, you identify some newly recruited employees to the factory, they have changed the formula. We know that for cork flavor, for production there is a formula. Mistakenly some of the newly recruited employees have changed the formula some ingredients, colors, taste, some mistake has been happen. So, after identifying the real problem behind that, what is the problem? You identified there is a quality problem in the product. After identifying the problem, now you find out a solution for that. What is the solution? Either you can ask these newly recruited employees to go back, leave the company or else you can send these newly recruited employees to a training program and enhance their skills and bring them back. So through that you ensure as the management accountant you ensure that this kind of a problem won't be happened in the next time. What has been actually done by you? You have controlled this unfavorable scenario. You have controlled this unfavorable scenario. Therefore, do you now understand dear students, because you had this plan, because you had this plan, you were able to compare your plan figures with the actuals, you identified the reason and you found a solution, you found a solution. By finding out this solution, you went for a control mechanism. What is the control mechanism? You sent the newly recruited employees to a training program and bring them back. That is the control mechanism you undertook to make sure that this kind of an unfavorable variance won't be happened in the next time. Therefore, now can you understand budgets act as plans itself where you can compare your actuals with the budgeted figures and also budgets act as a control mechanisms for the problems you have identified. Therefore, the main name of budgeting, keep in mind, the main name of budgeting is budget acts as a planning and controlling mechanisms. Budgets act as planning and controlling mechanisms. That is the number one, number one name of budgeting. All at a pahadili the mama explain kara mama vistara kare budgets natha ayavaya sakas kiri me avashata vayan mono adha kiya neka. All at a theren natti mama udaharnaya karagana pahadili kara all a budget teka khadana kutta Eketiyana vaasiya tamay oala ekthadama, oala ke performance welt avata passe oala ke actuals, satya figures, actual figures oala ta budget sekka sansandhane karanna puluwaan, kampaya karanna puluwaan. 
now you need to find out the solution as i have told you as one of a solution either you can ask your employees to leave the company or else as a second option now you train your employees and bring them back to make sure that the same issue won't be happened in the next time therefore you find out a sustainable solution for the problem you have identified here through that you control the environment to make sure this kind of a default is not occurred in the next time so dear students through that can you understand because having a budget supported you to identify a problem and also through that you find out a solution and you control this unfavorable scenario therefore number one name of budgeting is budgets act as planning and controlling mechanisms budgets act as planning and controlling mechanisms if you did not have a budget as the management accounting accountant would you be able to identify this kind of a variance this kind of a problem would you be able to identify a solution after analyzing the scenario nothing can be done therefore main benefit of having a budget is budget acts as a planning and controlling mechanisms ඉතින් අපි මේ දක්වා කතා කරේ පුතේ බජටින් වල තියෙන වාසි මොනවද ඇයි අපි බජට්ස් හදන්නේ මං කිව්වා වගේ බජට්ස් ඇක්ට් ඇස් ප්ලෑනින් ඇන්ඩ් කන්ට්‍රෝලින් මිකෑනිසම්ස් අපිට සැලැස්මක් විදිහට වගේම අන්ෆේවරබල් වේරියන්ට්ස් පාලනය කරන්න පුළුවන් එන්වයිමන්ට් එකක් හදා ගන්නත් අපිට මේ අයවැය බජට්ස් සකස් කිරීම උපකාරී වෙනවා මොකද බජට්ස් හැදුවොත් තමයි ඔයාලට ඔයාලගේ ඇත්ත එහෙම නැත්නම් ඇක්චුවල් පර්ෆෝමන්ස් ඔයාලගේ බජට්ස් එක්ක සංසන්දනය කරන්න පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ සංසන්දනය කරලා ප්‍රශ්නයක් ඇති වුණොත් ඒ ප්‍රශ්නේ බලලා ඒක විශ්ලේෂණය කරලා ඒ ප්‍රශ්නට විසඳුමක් හොයා ගන්න පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ බජට් එකක් තිබුණොත් තමයි therefore budgets act as planning and controlling mechanisms and the second one the second requirement of having a budget is dear students we can communicate this to the operational level employees of the organization now if you are working in the industry many of the industries many of the companies the head of the company what does he do as at first of january hmm? he arrange a meeting and explain what departments have performed well in terms of the budgets who achieved the budgets well and those who achieved the budgets well will be get promoted salaries will be increased likewise when this kind of a budget a plan is there that can be communicated to the operational level employees with targets if i draw the organizational hierarchy of a business uh, you know there are different levels top management is there and under the top management further categories hierarchies and under that further levels so different levels of organizational hierarchy we can see in large companies and these lower level employees actually prefer to go for different targets because they know that if they achieve the target their salaries will be increased promotions will be upgraded job security is there hence having a budget having a corporate plan with a business can be communicated to these lower level employees with targets 
through that they will be motivated. Therefore, budgets act as a motivational tool as well. Budgets sakaskiri me ilanga paramarte thamai ilanga aramuna thamai pute me budgets ekyanne company ka sambandha vidiri salasmane eva ge plan ne ka tibun ham apita puluang e plan ne ka lassana te me organizational hierarchy ke inna anekut seva ke ante communicate karan. ඒ ආලට ටාගට්ස් දෙන්න පුළුවන් අපේ ප්ලෑන් එක මේක හයි ඊළඟ අවුරුද්දට ඔයාලට කරන්න තියෙන්නේ මෙන්න මේ වැඩ කොටස එහෙම කළොත් ඔයාලගේ ප්‍රොමෝෂන්ස් සැලරිස් සම්බන්ධව අපි සලකා බලනවා ඒ වගේ ප්ලෑන් එකක් තිබුණොත් තමයි අපේ අනෙකුත් එම්ප්ලොයිස් ලට අපිට මේක කමියුනිකේට් කරන්න පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ ටාගට්ස් දෙන්න පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ එහෙම වුණොත් employees la godak welawata motivate wenawa api me targets achieve karo taniwaren ape job security eka e wagema ape salaries ape promotions me dewal walta hondai anith eka thamai me wage plan eka company ekata tiyenawa kiyala kiyanne employees la dannawa me company ekata honda pathway ekak tiyenawa me company eka yanne kotenda de kiyana eka employees lata identify karaganna puluwa ඒ හරහා එයාලා ඇත්තටම මෝටිවේට් වෙනවා. Therefore budgets act as a motivational tool as well. Not only that, there are many aims of budgeting. As the management accountant, if you prepare the budget, you know what is the pathway I need to go towards the success of the business. Therefore budgets show you the path. where you are supposed to go what kind of strategic decisions you need to make to achieve the success budgets show you the road therefore third aim of budgeting is dear students budgets act as a yardstick budgets act as a yardstick i will write it on the board budgets act as a yardstick for the business සාර්ථකත්වය ළඟා කර ගැනීම සඳහා අවශ්‍ය මිනුම් දණ්ඩක් විදිහට භාවිත කරන්න පුළුවන් අපිට අයවැය බජට්ස් ඉට් ෂෝස් ද කරෙක්ට් පාත් ෆෝ ද බිස්නස් ඇන්ඩ් ෆයිනලි බජට්ස් ඇක්ට් ඇස් ඇ බෙන්ච් මාකින් ටූල් ඇ විල් රයිට් ඉට් බජට්ස් ඇක්ට් ඇස් ඇ බෙන්ච් මාකින් ටූල් බෙන්ච් මාකින් කියලා කියන්නේ අපිට ඇත්තටම කම්පයා කරන්න පුළුවන් සංසන්දනය කරන්න පුළුවන් අපේ ඇත්ත තත්ත්වය අයවැය එක්ක සැලැස්ම එක්ක සංසන්දනය කරන්න පුළුවන් මේ අවුරුද්දේ අයවැය ගිය අවුරුද්දේ සැලැස්ම වල් එක්ක සංසන්දනය කරන්න පුළුවන් that is the next term of budgeting budgets act as a benchmarking tool therefore these are basically the aims of budgeting as a summary first one budget acts as planning and controlling mechanisms budget acts as planning and controlling mechanisms second budgets act as a motivational tool budget act as a motivational tool then budget act as a yardstick for a company yardstick finally budget act as a benchmarking tool So these are basically the main names of budgeting. Salasmaks ha palane kiri me tool leka kudhi hai ta pita budgets use karana pulwa. Budgets ti bhi mat thule na pe employees la motivate na abhi prayer ne ve na satto tuve na ego long targets hamba ve na nisa. Budgets apne saar takatve sandhaavu minum dhanda pashen kriya karna vage ma apita. 
अपे बजेट यूज कराने ने पुलवां संसंधने क्रीम संधा हा। So these are basically the main four aims of budgeting. So we will go back to our handout and see what it mentions as the aims of budgeting. Right. Look at the handout here. Budgets for planning. Let's read. Budgets compel managers to contribute to the corporate plan. Second, budgets provide a channel for managers to communicate their plans. Do you remember I explained you? These plans can be communicated throughout the organizational hierarchy. Then, budgets for control and motivation. Budgets clarify individual managers their responsibilities, what they are supposed to do. But budgets show you the pathway. Budgets provide a benchmark. Do you remember I explained? Budgets provide a benchmark for performance evaluation by qualifying objectives that a manager is expected to achieve. And finally, budgets will motivate managers to perform well. So these are basically the main aims of budgeting. All right, then we will move on to different classifications of budgets. Aya vaya, now budgets vala vividakar vargi karanyan tiyano, classifications. E vargi karanyan monadhi kiela api chutta kata karamu. Number one, top down versus bottom up budgeting. So here I have mentioned the explanation on what is meant by Top down budgeting. Top down. Can you understand from the wording itself? Top down budgeting. Now earlier I have drawn the organizational hierarchy. Do you remember? From this organizational hierarchy, if the top managers, top level, top level managers, if they prepare the budgets, that is called as a top down budgeting. Senior level managers are preparing the budgets and communicate it to the lower level managers of the organizational hierarchy. That is called as a top down budgeting. Top down budgeting kela kiyan putte ek budget sadan ne senior management level liking. Eala budget sadala passe ara lower level managers lata communicate karano. So, are there any benefits of having a top down budget? Yes, there are. It is less time consuming. As the senior managers are preparing budgets, we can say they are experts, they know everything. Therefore, those budgets will be advanced, comprehensive. So, such benefits are there in top down budgeting. And the next one is bottom up. Bottom up budgeting. Look here. The bottom up budgeting. Bottom up budgeting in the sense the departments, which means the lower level managers in each department, they are separately preparing their budgets and submit it to the seniors. Then, what do the seniors do? Seniors will get involved with these departmental managers, finalize these budgets and finally after combining these departmental budgets, they are preparing the corporate plan, overall budget for the organization. Therefore, practically I see more benefits, more advantages in bottom up budgeting than the top down budgeting. Why? In each department, what is the current environment? It is very well known by the departmental managers, not the senior managers. They are the people who know the environment very well. Therefore, more practical budgets can be prepared by departmental managers. And once they submit it to the senior managers, after getting involved by everybody as a team, they can finalize the budget. 
So it takes some time, yes, it's time consuming and more arguments, more suggestions will be also there. However, after having more arguments, after having more suggestions, I think at the end of the day, the result will be more fruitful. Therefore, with compared to top down budgets, bottom up budgets, I think as more practical, though it is time consuming as well as it is moving with more arguments. If you have a classification top down versus bottom up budgeting, man, uh, top down budgeting kiyanne mukakda kiyanne ke explain kala oya alata bottom up budgeting kiyala kiyanne a a departments ala managers la vena vena ma thamange department ekke budgets prepare karala senior level ekata denawa it passe e golong ekathu vela argument karala suggestions deela avasane thamai corporate plan ekka hadanne eka godak fruitful mokada Department wala in the managers la tamai atatama tamang in the environment take a hundata dane. Any sa, a hamo make a to karagana prepare karana budgets good up practical kela mama hitano. And that eka tamai palaveni classification eka. Okay, we will move on to the next one. The second classification that is incremental budgeting. Incremental budgeting in the sense. Let us read what is given here. Incremental budgeting is a method of budgeting in which next year budget is prepared by using the current year's actual results. So, I will highlight it. The next year budget is prepared by using the current year's actuals. By considering the current year's actuals, Lamai, then the company will adjust, do some adjustments for sales growth, expected inflation, exchange rate fluctuations then uh, interest rate changes after adjusting them they will very simply prepare the next year budget say for example okay go to the whiteboard once again in incremental budgeting what's happening you take the actuals of the last year now say your sales revenue in the last year is 100000 rupees what you do for the next year you simply adjust a 10 percent growth a 10 percent growth and indicate the next year expected revenue as 110,000 and also when we consider when you consider your expenditures you simply what you are simply doing let us say you adjust for inflation and with the high inflation in Sri Lanka say your material expenditure actually in the last year is 50,000 rupees. So, you increase 20 percent for the next year and indicate your expected expenditure for the material in the next year as 70,000 or something like that. So, that is how you simply prepare the incremental budgets by adjusting for the last year actuals you prepare your next year budget that is called as the incremental budgeting that is very easy way of budgets preparation. Second classification is over. Then third classification of budgets fixed versus flexible budgets fixed versus flexible budgets. So, Lamai, have you all um, learnt different cost classifications based on the cost to behavior? I am sure you have learnt. Ogolu again again the another piri vaya wala hasiri manu piri vaya vargi karane karana vidya. Ani varing all again again at the api 
කොටස් හතරකට බෙදනවා පිරිවැය හැසිරීම අනුව fixed cost variable cost semi variable cost and the step fix cost fixed cost i think you all are aware that is remains unchanged variable cost variable cost is the cost which will vary with the number of units production such as raw material cost direct labor cost fixed cost for example we can say rent expenditure the, they are fixed operational expenses then um, the semi variable cost in the sense within that cost a part of fixed and part of variable will be there say for example over time expenditure finally the step fix cost in the sense fix cost is changing step by step and there are separate examples we can explain such as machinery cost that is fixed for a particular period of time and once again when we purchase another machine cost will quickly go up and constant for a particular period of time step fixed cost therefore dear students by considering these cost behaviors by considering this cost behaviors if we prepare budgets they are simply called as flexible budgets fixed budget in the sense that is remaining unchanged that is not practical actually flexible budget as i have mentioned you by considering different cost behavior patterns if we prepare the budgets that is called as a flexible budget are you clear on that there are mainly we can see different classifications of budgets top down versus bottom up budgets then incremental budgets and third category is fixed versus flexible budgets so shall we go for a little example on preparing a flexible budget okay so uh, these explanations actually you can read by yourselves very simple this is the example i have given you all to prepare a flexible budget let's see how that can be prepared first of all let's read the given explanation in this example following data are related to a manufacturing company maximum level of capacity is 1000 units your maximum production is 1000 units material cost per unit is 150 labor cost per unit is 60 rupees expenses are the direct expenses that is 20 rupees per unit so you can see these are definitely the variable cost vary with the number of units production for 60% of capacity level what is the 60% capacity level 600 units for 60% capacity level they have given you factory overheads as 36000 out of that they say 30% is fixed you have to concern about that now selling and administration overheads they have given you the total is 42000 out of that they tell you 70% is fixed you have to concern on that finally you are required to prepare flexible budgets for the production at 60% 80% and 100% capacity level so once you receive this kind of an example just read it twice and identify what's the story given so you can see when preparing the budget actually here only the expenditures have to be indicated so these are very simple you can simply multiply 150 by 600 units 60% capacity means 600 units no 
80 percent mean 800 units, the 100 percent means 1000 units. So, if you manufacture 600 units, simply these are variable expenditures 150 multiplied by 600 units and you can very simply get the material cost, labor cost, other expenses. A uh, little tricky area is how you can finally estimate this factory overheads and the selling and administrative overheads. What does it tell you? I will take only one variable here factory overheads. Total factory overheads is 36,000 out of that 30 percent is fixed. So, how can you find it out? Let us do that factory overheads total value is 36,000 out of that for 60 percent capacity level okay, for 60 percent capacity level 30 percent is fixed. 30 percent is fixed. So, how much will be the fixed cost? 36,000 into 30 percent. Ten thousand eight hundred. That is fixed. Fixed in the sense, Lamai. Though it is sixty percent capacity level, or else eighty percent capacity level, or else hundred percent capacity level. Under whatever a capacity level, this fixed expenditure won't be changed. That is. 10,800. Egolo factory overheads wali. See at a fixed loop. Ekane dahada sata siya. Eka mona capacity level leke una. Venas venine. Ituru pramane tamai capacity level leke ta venas venne. So under that, what did you do? You identified the cost behavior patterns and go ahead. Okay? So, this is the fixed expenditure of the factory overheads and the variable part also you have to calculate. So, for 60 percent capacity level variable part is out of this 36,000 you have to deduct 10,800 that is 25,200 this is varying this is not fixed, this is varying. Now, this 25,200 is for 60 percent capacity level. For 80 percent capacity level, how can you find it out? If 25,200 is for 60 percent capacity level, for 80 percent capacity level, what would be the expenditure? Like that way, for 100 percent capacity level, how can you calculate? As I do not have enough space here, I will erase this and write down. For 100 percent capacity level, how can I calculate? 25,200. multiplied by 100 percent divided by 60 percent. Ar api ganang haddadi theory yak, nithanam khatha karan ni acharata mecharak na mecharata kocharak da. Visi pandas desiya keela kiyan ne nishpadane hatak, units hatak nishpadane karan ni anna piriwaya na asuva kata kocharak da. Likewise, you all can prepare the flexible budget in this way, this is my answer. So, as I have mentioned you very simply you can calculate the material cost, labor cost and the variable expenses. The tricky area is just the calculation of factory overheads and the selling and administrative expenses. 
So, I have uh, explained you how to calculate the factory overheads here by segregating what is the fixed part and what is the variable part. Similar way you can follow to calculate the selling and administrative expenses as well. So, in uh, selling and administrative expenses what do they tell you? Out of this 42,000 worth total amount 70 percent is fixed and the remaining 30 percent is variable. Just apply the given information as <coughs> what we have done in the whiteboard previously. So, with that our answer, our answer shows us under 60 percent capacity level the total manufacturing expenditure as 216,000 not the total manufacturing selling and admin expenses are also there. Therefore, the total expected expenditure is 216,000. Then under 80 percent capacity level that is 274,600 rupees and 400 percent capacity level which means for 1000 units it is 333,200. So, you can do this by yourselves and get practice for this. So, this is a type of a flexible budget. Fine. The next classification zero based budgeting. So far, how many classifications we have learnt? Number one, top down versus bottom up budgeting. Then, fixed versus flexible budgeting and also the incremental budgeting and fourth classification is zero based budgeting. What is this zero based budgeting? So, from the name itself what you can understand here? When we start preparing our budgets that starts from zero. Budget sadhana patangani bindue. All at a matakada, api incremental budgets for the katakara, giaura the actual solata api adjust karana, yam kisi u prati shataya. See at the hayak, visak, uddamane anua, polyanu patha vena svi manua, adjust karala api igava aurud the budget take a hadana harimalaisian incremental budgeting process. But here you will not take last year budget so actuals anything for preparing the next year budget you start from the beginning. Methen the zero based budgeting will the all a budget take a bindu em patangarne mula inang hadana patangarne. Say for example you want to determine what will be your sales revenue for the next year. So, sales revenue simply means selling price into the number of units. Now, when you are forecasting your next year's sales revenue, you have to identify okay, what will be the expected units to be sold in the market. To determine that, you do not consider it with the last years. What you do? You can go for a market survey and based on the customer's comments for your product, you can analyze and forecast what will be your exact demand in the market for your product through a market survey. How you determine your selling price? It is not based on the last year's price. Once again, based on the preference of the customers, based on the elasticity of demand for your product and also the costing methods you use such as target costing, traditional costing methods can be. So, through such a nice analysis, you forecast your selling price for the next year. It is not just adjusting for the last year's selling price. Therefore, dear students, when you 
go for such a nice survey, comprehensive analysis to forecast your next year sales revenue that is very accurate, that is justifiable. Uh, even when you are presenting your next year's budget in front of your seniors, you can very nicely explain how you have determined your next year sales revenue, how you have determined your next year expenses, justifiable. You analyze and forecast them with a very nice base. So that is simply called as a zero based budget. That is not a comparison with last year budget. You start from the beginning and you go for a comprehensive survey of forecasting for the next year. Revenues, expenditures, assets, everything. With the justifiable figures, you prepare the budget. That is zero based budgeting. Actually, if you prepare such a budget, that is very accurate. However, it is time consuming and costly. Keep that in mind also. So, if I read what is zero based budgeting in the given definition, let us read it. The principle behind zero based budgeting is that the budget for each cost center should be made from scratch, scratch or zero. Every item of expenditure must be justified. So, I will highlight it. Every item of the expenditure must be justified in its ent uh, ent entirely in order to be included in the next year's budget. Any same zero based budgeting kya nika tikak vilayana cost ka kya na vedak api harima saralava incremental budgets hadua vage lamai gya urudde budgets valata nathang actual valata adjustments karala iga par budget ka hadan ne honda analysis ka karala market survey ka karala api suppliers like negotiate karala Harima Pili Valata, Base Sekak Atuatamai, Iga Vaurude, Ape Adayam, Viedam, Watkam, Siala, Ape Plan Karane, Forecast Karane. I think him a budget take a tapikina, zero based budgeting. Bindu and Tamayapi, a budget take a Hadana Patangane, Bindu and Patangano Kelekiane, Ape Giauru the figures will take him a adjustment take a Karane. Maybe a budget take a Harima. Nivaradi, accurate, eva gema, justifiable. So, that is simply called as a zero based budget. Okay. So, with that, we will move on to the next one. Cash driven and sales driven budgets. So, these are the two types of budgets basically the companies prepare. Sales driven, Vikunum Matapadanam Mu Ayavaya Saha, Cash driven, Mudal Pravahaya Matapadanam Mu Ayavaya. Okay. Before moving into this example, let us have a little explanation on what is sales driven and what is cash driven. First of all, let us explain on what is the difference between profit and the cash. I think you know it very well. Profit in the sense, if you just imagine the structure of the income statement, okay. In the income statement, we have our revenues, expenditures, and finally the profits. So, in an income statement, when you finalize your profits, tell me, does it include only the cash items and 
is the non cash items are also included. According to the accruals concept, Upachita Sankal Pewali when we are finalizing our profits, within profits, non cash items are also included. Say, for example, credit sales, which is relevant to this particular year, and also some of the expenditures we have not yet paid but still relevant to the particular year included in the income statement and also some non-cash items such as depreciation includes in the income statement and we finalize our profits based on that. Therefore, dear students, profits are intangible. Profits cannot be touched and see it is vague. But when it comes to cash, if you tell me, Miss, I have 10,000 rupees with me, then to confirm that, I can ask from you, okay, show me whether you have 10,000 rupees with you. Cash is tangible, that cannot be vague. Therefore, when preparing budgets, companies are basically focusing on cash inflows, cash outflows and finally, they will forecast what will be the cash balance at the end of a particular period of time. That is simply called as a cash driven budget. What is the ultimate requirement of preparing a cash driven budget? to identify the expected cash balance in a particular period of time. And sales driven budget in the sense it is like this. Basically our target is to prepare budgeted income statement and also through that we will move on to our budgeted statement of financial position as well. And basically these are called as master budgets budgeted income statement, budgeted statement of financial position, budgeted statement of cash flow, they are the master budgets of a company. If you have a cash driven budget, you will consider the forecast, the expectations of the forecast. Yam kisi kala pariche dea kawasane kocharaka mudal balance seka tianada cash balance seka tianada sales driven budgets well a main requirement take a pradhan aramunatamai ape me financial performance expected profits the losses the kianeka andunaga nima saha budgeted statement of financial position shesha patria te harahama Hadana Pulwa. Eta got a vicious shame, sales driven sa, cash driven ke and athre venus at the number profits saha, cash ke and a kathre venus, mangara kaling, pahadili kala vage. Api gene gene tieno, cash saha profits ke and a kathre, tiena venus kam api, atherama elevas vala in the lama, igene gene tieno. So I think this will not be a difficult task for you all to prepare sales driven and the cash driven budgets. So, under sales driven budgets, Lamai, we will basically focus on budgeted income statement and the budgeted statement of financial position and under cash driven budgets, we will basically prepare the budgeted statement of cash flow. Hope it is clear for you all. Okay. Now, um, we will move on to the next part that is an example to prepare a simple cash driven budgets. Okay, let us read the given example now that is a cash budget preparation, a very simple one. Following forecasted information is given in ABC Private Limited for, a, for the months of October and November 2019. 
2023. Forecasted figures have been given. And look here. So, in the month of October and November, they have mentioned what will be your expected sales, purchases, distribution expenses, administrative expenses and the finance cost. Further, they have told you in the question, sales and purchases are made on credit basis. You have credit sales and credit purchases. Cash balance as at 1st of October 2023, there is the beginning cash balance worth how much? 21,000 and the 60% of the debtors. Who are your debtors? Your customers. You sell your products on credit basis. 60% of your customers can be collected during the same month with a 10% discount. Now, when you sell your products on credit, out of the total value, 60% of the customers will pay you in the same month and to motivate them, you give them a 10% discount. And the remaining can be collected in the next month without a discount. Remaining 40% will pay you in the next month. Therefore, you are not going to give them a discount at all. Debtors balance is at 1st of October 2023 is 12%. Sorry, 12,000. What does this tell you? The debtors balance at the beginning of October is 12,000 mean you may have sold a particular amount of goods on credit in the last month. 60% of the customers might have paid you on time and this is the remaining amount, remaining 40% and they need to pay you that amount in this time. Further, 30% of the creditors is paid during the same month. Who are your creditors? You purchase goods on credit from your suppliers and you need to pay them. How you pay? 30% you will pay in the same month you purchase the products at a 5% discount. When you pay in the same month, the supplier will give you a 5% discount and the remaining is paid in the next month without a discount. That is how it mentions here. Creditors balance which means in this month you have to pay 8000 to your suppliers. Creditors balance at 1st of October 2023 is 8000. Now you have to take this information to your mind as a story then you can very easily prepare your cash budget. All other expenses are paid in the same month when they were occurred. Other expenses not to worry about that. We pay in the same month those expenses are being occurred. So, you are supposed to prepare the cash budget for the months of October and November 2023. So, how we can prepare the cash budget? Simply you have to filter what are the cash flows in that relevant period of time which means your cash inflows, receipts and cash outflows, the payment. And once after adjusting your opening cash balance, you can come to the closing cash balance. Okay, let us do this example. So, what is the ini initial step? First of all, you can prepare the structure based on the given information. Actually, I have my answer with me. Now, when you start doing this question, you do not have any figure. Therefore, when you are setting your structure, basically the topics and all you have to mention in three lines. Cash receipts based on the story, you have to identify how many lines I need to keep for indicating cash receipts. 
how many lines for cash payments? Receipts are there, payments are there, then you have to find out what is your net cash flow. Then adjust the opening cash balance and finally get the closing cash balance. If you have cash budget, you can use the example of the question. If you have a structure, you can use the balance of the Labim world, the lines of the Gavim world, just imagine that you have lines of the net cash flow, opening cash balance, and finally, you have to use the opening cash balance. We will come to the closing cash balance. So, in this example, there are no very difficult tasks for you to do. However, you have to be concerned about calculating cash receipts and the cash payments for your suppliers. So, dear students, I have not messed up everything in this structure. Therefore, to calculate cash receipts and the cash payments I have gone for a little working. I have done it as a separate working. Why? In this example it tells you when you sell your products, this is from sales revenues point of view, when you sell your products, 60 percent of your customers will pay on time with the 10 percent discount and the remaining will pay you in the next month, therefore, I have segregated it, months of October, November. My cash receives from sales, 60 percent, 40 percent, likewise I have segregated it and got the number. So, I will do a one uh, calculation for the month of October, let us see how these figures are coming. So, in this example, in the month of October, your sales value is 50,000. Then, out of your sub customers, out of your customers worth 50,000, 60 percent will pay you in the same month with a 10 percent discount. With a 10 percent discount in the sense you are giving 10 percent to your customers, therefore out of this 60 percent you receive only 90 percent, you receive only 90 percent. So, through that also you can get your answer, if I am not mistaken it is mentioned as 27,000 here, you can do it in this way or else out of this 50,000, your 60 percent of your customers will pay, which means 30,000 they will pay you. When they pay you, you give them a 10 percent discount, 10 percent discount in the sense you will give them 3,000. Once you remove 3,000, finally, your customer will give you 20,000 rupees and the remaining 20,000 out of this 50,000 which means the remaining 40 percent you will receive in the month of November and no discounts for those customers. So, that is how you need to calculate this part. Therefore, we will go back to our answer. So, this is how I have calculated. Can you see? 27,000 in the month of October and the remaining 20,000 in the month of November. Likewise, you can calculate 60 percent from the November month sales in the month of November and the remaining 40 percent is in the month of December and we are not supposed to prepare the cash budget for the month of December. Therefore, I have not mentioned that. And what is this 12,000? Do you remember I have told you the beginning balance of your customers, they need to pay you in the month of October. So, by indicating all these cash inflows, 
Finally, in the month of October, you will receive 39,000 rupees and in the month of November, you will receive 63,200 rupees. The same way you can do for the payments as well. How it occurs? Same scenario, what is happening? Out of the total credit purchasers, you are paying 30% with a 5% discount in the same month and the remaining 70% in the next month. Therefore, if I calculate it, what is uh, the credit purchases in the month of November? 20,000. So, out of this 20,000, out of this 20,000, I will pay my suppliers 30 percent and they will give me a 5 percent discount mean out of this 30 percent, I will pay them only 95 percent. That is how I have taken here 5,700 and the remaining 14,000 I will pay in the month of November. So, go back to my answer. Can you see? 5,700 I will pay in the month of October and the remaining 14,000 in the month of November. Likewise, what is this 8,000 here? That is the beginning balance which means last month I have purchased on credit, 30 percent I have paid. This is the remaining 70 percent which I need to pay in the month of October. Therefore, altogether my purchasers payment, my payments for purchasers is 13,700 in the month of October and 20,840 in the month of November. Hope it is clear for you all. So, with that by extracting these values, I go to my final cash budget. Can you see? I have mentioned my cash receipts and these are all my cash payments including distribution expenses, administrative expenses, finance cost and I have taken my net cash inflow here. Can you see? There are no cash outflows. Net cash flow is the cash inflow which means my cash receipts is higher than my cash payments. Cash inflows are higher than my cash outflows. Mudal labim, mudal gavim velt vada vedini sa avasane mage net cash flow eka positive value veka ke nama. E tekkama mage laachwe dhanta tiya nama oktober maase mula visi ek dahak. E kai me atadas tunsiya ke nama mudal labim tika eka tuna hama October maas avasane veddi mata tiya nama rupiyal visi nama daas tun siyak. That is my closing cash balance. And in the month of November end, I will have a positive closing cash balance worth 59,616. So then, you will sometimes ask from me, is it important to identify these expected cash balances for a particular future period of time. Why is that? The may be that api cash budget take a hadala November maase avasane mag mata tiyen no ne panas namada saise hatak kela mama forecast karno. The ogolu mage ngahai atra mehem avashyad. Eke loku vedagat kamak tiyeno. Udaharnya kedai itu hitan loko, mama project kita kerana na balap orang tu yang inno November masa antima, me project kita mati ano rupiah laksha. Dana te mangga abe hema loko muda lakne. Eto kote, dem mama a villa abe start kerana orang samhar villa abe te hadisie rupiah laksha ak mama loko poliya kote piting ganna puluang, ek mati hari awasia. 
මේ වගේ ෆෝකාස්ට් එකක් කරලා තිබුණාම පුතේ අපි දන්නවා ගොඩක් වෙලාවට නොවැම්බර් මාසයේ අන්තිම වෙද්දී 59660 කියන්නේ රුපියල් 60000ක් මගේ කම්පණිය එක ඇතුලේ තියේවි එහෙනම් මම දැන් ලෑස්ත වෙන්න ඕනේ ඉතුරු 40000 මම කොහෙන්ද කලෙක්ට් කරගන්න ඕනේ කියන එක ගැන හිතන්න අවම පොලියකට විත වෙරි ලෝ කොස්ට් අඩුම කොස්ට් එකකින් කොහොමද මම රුපියල් 40000 හොයා ගන්නේ කියන එක මට දැන් ඉඳලම ප්ලෑන් කරගෙන යන්න පුළුවන් අන්න ඒක තමයි ඇත්තටම කැෂ් බජට් එකක් හදන එකේ ලොකු වාසිය වෙන්නේ why it is important to prepare a cash budget because once you forecast your expected cash balance in a particular future period of time as i have mentioned you say at the end of november you are going to conduct a project which costs around 100000 so if you have not planned for a cash budget if you have not identified what will be your expected cash balance in that month probably you may rush up and get the 100000 total amount might be at a higher interest at a higher cost such as what our government normally do without a plan but if you prepare a cash budget you know that at the end of november i will almost have 60000 rupees with me therefore only the remaining 40000 i need to plan on from where from which sources i need to get so that's why preparation of a cash budget is important for us i think that's clear for you then with that we will move on to sales driven budgets then our next task is to prepare sales driven budgets so i told you the main requirement is to measure the budgeted financial performance and the financial position here therefore our main requirement the initial step is to prepare these two master budgets and out of that i will mainly focus on the preparation of budgeted income statement or else the budgeted statement of profit and loss under this sales driven budgets එතකොට සේල්ස් ඩ්‍රිවන් බජට්ස් සකස් කිරීමේ අරමුණ මම ඔයගොල්ලන්ට කිව්වා පැහැදිලි කළා මුලින්ම ඒ නිසා අපි එක්සැම්පල් එකට යන්න මේ එක්සැම්පල් එක ගොඩාක් තොරතුරු එක්ක තියෙන්නේ මොකද ඉන්කම් ස්ටේට්මන්ට් එකක් හදද්දී අපිට ගොඩාක් තොරතුරු අවශ්‍යයි ඒ නිසා අපි බලමු කොහොමද අපි මේ මාස්ටර් බජට්ස් හදන්න පටන් ගන්නේ කියලා හරි okay this is the example first of all we need to read it very carefully and get the figures into our head get the story into our head as i have mentioned you earlier let's read damro plc that is actually a private company okay damro makes two types of granite top concert tables casual and luxury two types of tables the company is manufacturing details need to prepare the budget for the year 2024 is as follows details have been given for you so what are the two types of tables that the company is manufacturing casual granite table and luxury granite tables what are further information given to you red oak and the granite actually these are what raw materials red oak granite two types of raw materials we are using here to manufacture one casual granite table we need 12 board feet of red oak and for a luxury also 12 board feet of granite and what is the red dock sorry uh, they are red dock requirement what is the granite requirement to manufacture one casual 
table we need 6 square feet of granite and for a luxury table we need 8 square feet of granite. Then uh, further they have given you to manufacture one table we need direct manufacturing labor 4 hours for a casual granite table and 6 hours for a luxury granite table. Expected sales units. Our expectation is to prepare 50,000 casual granite tables and 10,000 luxury granite tables and sell in the market. They are our expected sales. Furthermore, information have been given. Look, expected selling price has been given. Target end in inventory in units have been given. I will explain you later what is this target end inventory and why it is important. And the beginning inventory of tables have been given. And the beginning inventory value has been given. Because the beginning inventory of tables in the sense lamai that is how many tables we have for now at our inventory and those tables have been manufactured based on the last year, last year uh, purchased values, prices. Therefore, I have given you all this beginning inventory value as well. Few more information and these are the inventory amounts of raw materials and with this information further uh, material prices have been given, labor price has been given. Now in the question you can see in this table they have given you the number of labor hours, quantity of materials not in terms of rupees and in this slide what is the price of labor, what is the price of material and for the manufacturing overhead cost per table has been given, distribution expenses and the marketing expenses expectation percentages are being given, estimated percentages are being given and finally, you are supposed to prepare the budgeted income statement that is one of a major master budget. Right, we will start preparing master budgets now. Now first of all tell me are you all familiar with the income statement structure? Now, if I draw it on the board in detailed, so you have your sales revenue, especially in a manufacturing company, this is a manufacturing company and you have to deduct your cost of goods sold, sales revenue, deduct your cost of sales, then what do you get? Your gross profit. Then out of that you have to deduct your um, and you have to add here operating income and also deduct operating expenses, other operating income has to be added, operating expenses you are supposed to reduce what are basically the operating expenses, your selling and distribution expenses, administrative expenses and other operational expenses. I will just indicate few lines there and once you deduct all of them, you will get your operating profit, you will get your operating profit. Then out of that, you have to deduct financial expenses, then you will get profit before tax, then deduct the tax expense, then you will get the profit for the year. And basically 
when we structure this income statement, look, you have to get the sales revenue first. How to get the sales revenue? Price into quantity. Then cost of goods sold, can you directly get to the cost of goods sold value at once? No. Cost of goods sold, if I write how to get the cost of goods sold here, you all are very well aware on that. We kunum piri wire. We have to indicate our opening inventory. Then simply the purchases. Now, Damro is a production manufacturing company. Therefore, not buying and selling company. Therefore, we have to add the production cost. that has to be added. And we have to deduct the closing inventory. And this is the way we are supposed to get the cost of goods sold. Therefore, all these things cannot be done at once within this budgeted income statement. Now, you can see you have to find out okay, what is the opening inventory value, what will be the production cost, what will be the closing inventory value. Therefore, dear students, we have to prepare separate budgets, separate budgets, sub budgets to identify these values and they are called as functional budgets. Manghitana wala to make a pahadili kiela then income statement structure ka gattama. Vikunum maadayamen, vikunum pirivaya adukal ham apita dalalabe no ita passe anekut. Operational, mehayum, mehayum maadayam viyadam galapala ita passe interest poli aadayam viyadam galapala api tax galapala profit take a gunne. Neither eto kota then sales revenue vekanang hari lacy api price seka quantity eking vadi kar hama api da revenue veka vikunum maadaya meno. Vikunum piri vaya a buying and selling company hekanang api da no opening inventory kata api purchase seka tukala tower a return outwards then carriage inwards. Eva ge deva adjust karala, closing inventory ka adjust karala, tamai vikunum pirivaya ganne. Manufacturing company ekanam production cost ka nishpadana pirivaya adjust karala tamai vikunum pirivaya ganne. It in a me hamadema make atule karana bear. Vikunum pirivaya ganna production cost ka hoyan noni. Inventory values vena vena ma hoyan noni. Methana may savarga dekakhadano, e the Kenish padana piriva, vena vena mohoyan noni. Etha kota, apita yana vena ma functional budgets valata. Master budgets valata in the kali. Enisapi balamu, ekin neka ekin neka kohumadapi, functional budgets prepare karan nekiela. Okay? So, first item here is your sales revenue. Therefore, I will start from sales budget onwards. Right, we will start from uh, the sales budget. Once again go back to the question. I have already done my answer. Therefore, how I have taken this information? There are two types of tables we manufacture. Casual granite table and luxury granite tables. Two tables. And in the question when you read, we have already read that. We are expecting to sell 50,000 casual granite tables and 10,000 luxury. So, I get these expected sales units multiplied by simply expected selling price per unit. Very simple. Preparation of sales budget is very simple. So, multiply from uh, these expected selling prices and you can see from the casual granite tables, your expected sales revenue is 30 million and from 
luxury granite tables, your expected revenue is 8 million altogether, your expected total revenue is 38 million. A sales budget taker, Harimal AC, Apita Dila Tieno expected sales units gana, expected selling price per each table Dila Tieno, multiply Kerala, Gana Tiene, all again expected sales revenue vicker, Apexita Vikunu Mada Ema Vene, million a tisata. Sales revenue vicker hurry. Ilagatape Vikunum Pirivaya Hoyana Yana Patangan one. We need to start from the initial step on how to get the final cost of goods sold. For that, we have to start it from the production. The vikunan ne kochchara de kiyala balwa te passe apni balan noone kochchara nishpa adne karan noone the kochchara khadan noone the. Wala mukde hi thani vikunan ne pramane ma khadan na moone the. Natta ite vada vena suttarya kapade labey the. Then we will move on to the production budget. Okay, this is my production budget. So, as I have mentioned you earlier, do I need to exactly manufacture what I need to sell or isn't that so? How can I determine that? So, in the question, did you see, dear students, it tells you Companies expected sales units are 50,000 and 10,000 respectively. But for now, for now, company has in their warehouses 10,000 casual granite tables and 500 luxury granite tables. The may when a company ke warehouses wala tiyanama, Casual tables, daha kui, luxury pansiya kui. Eti kane muli mabi market te kata dan, eni sa, casual mesa panas daha kui, luxury daha daha kui, hadan namashane. Danatama, ekolos daha kui, pansiya kui, tiyanama. As the opening inventory, arambaka toge vidihat. Eni sa, pinda puluang, e pramane a inkarala, itru tika, nishpadane karana gana. ඒ දෙකම තව පොඩි ප්‍රශ්නයක් තියෙනවා මොකද්ද හදිස්සියේ හරි emergency එකක් ආවොත් දැන් අපි මේ විකුණන්න අවශ්‍ය ප්‍රමාණය දැන් ආරම්භක තොගය අත ජස්ට් කරාට පස්සේ අපි නිෂ්පාදනය කරන්න ඕනේ casual granite tables ඇත්තටම 50000න් 1000ක් අයින් කළාම 49000ක් හැදුවාම ඇති Luxury eva, the Hada him pansia kainker ham, namadas pansia kadu hamati. A paiga of a parer Eka parata apinishpa the nekaran yanakota prashnea quilla. Hadis seva nishpa the nekaragan a berry unot. Customers lag him prashnea no in the market ticket a dan nakiela. Vedipura mesa pramania, hadala timbata kama ne. Eka tama yape managers lapid suggest karani. Not to sell in this period, may Kale Vikuna and Neve, Ilanga period decade Vikuna and Balagina, Api Vadipura Mesa Pramania, Hadala Tiagana, may par, and naked Tamaya began our son of Toge Kela. And here they have given you the target in inventory. Our son of Toge Dila Tina Ogolunta, Vadipura Mesa Ekolos Dahak, Casual Welling Hadana. Luxury, luxury welling, Tava Vadipura Panda Pansi Yak Mesa Hadana. Did you understand what I have explained you? Therefore, it is not exactly every time we need to manufacture the number of tables where we are going to sell. We have to adjust opening and the closing inventories of tables. Therefore, what I do. I have now expected my quantity of sales as 50,000 CGTs and 10,000 LGTs. For this, what I am supposed to do? I have to deduct the closing inventory and add the opening inventory. I will write it on the board. How you prepare your production budget? You have two types of tables. 
casual granite tables and luxury granite tables and your expected sales are there. For this you have to add your closing inventory and you have to deduct your opening inventory. So then only you will get exactly how many of casual granite tables and how many of luxury granite tables should be manufactured. So the, then we will look into my answer. The topic should be production budget here not the sales budget. Last time it is the sales budget mistakenly I have put the same topic here. This is the production budget. Your expected sales are there. What is the target end inventory? 11,000 casual granite tables and 500 luxury tables. Add them because you need to manufacture those tables in this time and deduct the opening inventories which are there in your warehouses already. No need to manufacture more. Therefore, deduct them. You can put them within brackets. So, with that, can you see? Though your expected number of sales of CGTs are 50,000, you need to manufacture 60,000 casual granite tables. And though your expected sales is 10,000 luxury granite tables, here that is same because your closing and opening inventories are also same. Therefore, production is equals to the sales in luxury granite tables. So that is also very simple how we are supposed to prepare the second functional budget that is the production budget just adjust closing and the opening inventories of the finished goods. Now after identifying how many casual granite tables and how many luxury granite tables to be manufactured. Then what would be your next step? Then mesa kochara khadan no ne the kela forecast kalata passe, finalize kalata passe. Ila gatte mokak the balan no ne. Me mesa khadan na materials kochara o ne the. What is the material requirement? Is the next step. Therefore, we have to go for the third functional budget. That is. Material usage budget, third functional budget. So, what are the two types of materials we are using here? Red oak and the granite. Can you see this is my answer here? Red oak and the granite. Red oak have been given uh, in terms of uh, board feet or square feet. If I am not mistaken, let us see in the question itself, red oak, board feet and granite square feet. Okay, I have once again done a little mistake there, red oak square feet and sorry board feet and granite square feet, do not worry about that. Here I have identified the material requirement, how? I need to manufacture 60,000 casual granite tables, right? So, how did I get this figure from the last production budget? I need to manufacture 60,000 casual granite tables. So, in the question they have given you, look, I need 12, 12 board feet to manufacture one casual granite table. And once again 12 board feet to manufacture one luxury table. So, very simple. If you want 12 board feet of red dog to manufacture one table, then multiply it by the number of tables to be manufactured and get the material requirement. And we need 6 square feet of granite to manufacture one casual granite table and 8 square feet for a 1 luxury table. 
So, just multiply by the number of tables that is the material usage budget. Amudravya, avashyatavya anu api budget eka hadan noni dhe ammitana gaane pehadili oma dheela tiyana ugol onta eka casual table eka hadan na red oak monadami board feet kyanne laali adi laali adi dola hak kona lu ehna mese kata red dog lali adi dolahai nang api mese hata daha khada noa na dolaha hata daha yang adi karan noa ni granite tone alu square feet square feet kya ni warga adi eka mese kata casual leke haya kona lu ehna mese hata daha khada noa na haya api hata daha yang adi karan noa evi di hata muta mai luxury table sweat at hada ni very simple so likewise you can see my answer for material usage budget. Look, I need total red dock board feet. How many? 840,000 board feet of red dock I need and 440,000 square feet of granite I need. That is material usage. Then what is our next requirement? Now we need now we have found what is the usage and then we need to identify okay how many of red dog and granite do we need to purchase. Ape ilang requirement ega mukak the material usage ega awasya pramane haduna gatar passe kochara materials pramane ang kapi gan no ne de kiela balan no ne. ओगल मगे यहाँ इतने यूज़ करने मटेरियल्स प्रमाणे मने गाना तो नहीं ऐ मदर ना क्वेश्चन ने क्या वाला दीला थी ना बाला ना बैनर्ट मत अपे व्याह हाउसेस वाला रेड डॉग ग्रेनाइट तीन ना प्रमाणे दीला थी ना ऐ नांगे दिंग आवश्यक ना प्रमाणे टा वाला अडूएन ने गानो ने मुकद व्याह हाउसेस वाला त मैनेजर्स लापी तो दीला दिए ना हादिस्सीय के दे यूज़ कराना वैडी पूरा ओड़ा कराना किया ला 80,000 बोर्ड फीट ऑफ रेड डॉग कैन 20,000 स्क्वायर फीट ऑफ ग्रेनाइट दैट इज़ दी एंडिंग इन्वेंट्री इधिंग अपी मटेरियल्स गान्ना कोटा ये वैडी पूरा प्रमाणित तक कम गान्नो ने ऐनी सारे यूज़ पर्चेस कराने, इन्हीं साम मटेरियल यूसेज जिके साह पर्चेस से कातरे वे न सकते हैं ना। Therefore, as the next step, इलांगे स्टेप पे कभी दिया टापी हदन नोने मटेरियल पर्चेस बजट टेकर। As the next step, we need to prepare the material purchase budget. How? To the material usage budget, adjust. The opening and the closing inventory of the materials. You have to add the closing inventory and deduct the opening inventory. It is given here. Opening inventory values, closing inventory values have been given. So, just take the budgeted usage. Usage is this, no? So, take the budgeted usage and deduct the opening stock of materials red dock and the granite at the closing inventory of materials and finally see you need to purchase 850 board feet of red dock and 400,000 square feet of granite 850,000 board feet of red dock and 400,000 square feet of granite. I think it is clear for you. And what is the price per square foot of red dock? It is also given in the question. A price per square foot of red dock is 7, granite 10. So, multiply by those prices and get the material cost. एतो गोड़ रेड डोग लैलिया डियाक रुपियाल हताई ग्रनाइट वारगा डियाक रुपियाल दहाय आई इतें मटीरियल रिक्वायमंट एक प्राइस सेकेंग वेडिक करला मटीरियल कॉस्ट एक लेसी एम आपीट गानन पुलुवा 
So, you can see the total budgeted material cost is 5,950,000 that is for red oak material purchase cost and the granite is 4 million material cost is over. So, when it comes to the production cost overall production cost we have material cost basically labor cost and also the manufacturing overhead cost therefore, we have to prepare those budgets as well. So, just look this is my labor budget you can see in the question they have given you to manufacture one casual table we need 4 labor hours, one luxury table we need 6 labor hours therefore, just simply multiply by number of tables and get the total number of labor hour requirement and per hour we are paying 20 rupees for both the tables. Therefore, multiply by the labor cost per hour and get the total labor cost. I have received it as 6 million labor budget taker. Harima le siyang hada gaanna puluwaan, api nishpaadane karanna bala puruttu ena mesa gaana tiyeno, mesa kata yana shramapaya gaana tiyeno, eni saapata bala anna puluwaan mulu shramapaya gaana kocharada. It pass se ka paya kata gevan rupiyal pramane ki yadu kiyala balala multiply karala harima lesi yeng apita shramaya sandhahayana pirivaya hoya ganna puluwaan eka million haya that is 6 million. Then material cost is ok, labor cost is ok and the overhead cost. So, this is my I have actually not prepared an overhead budget because you can see in the question I have simply given you all for a casual granite table overhead cost manufacturing overhead is 160. For a deluxe or a luxury granite table it is 240. So, keep in mind dear students normally in practical scenario overhead cost we know overhead cost is the cost that is difficult to be identified for the unit for a cost object therefore normally what are the methods we are using to allocate overhead cost either absorption costing or the activity based costing we use therefore practically you have to use those methods to assign overhead cost to the product we manufacture However, as our lesson today is budgeting, I have not uh, made it more complex. My question, I did not make it more complex and I have simply given you all per unit overhead cost. Therefore, when you identify the total production cost, you have to consider what? Material cost, we have done it and labor cost finally production or else the manufacturing overhead cost. So, once you add them together you can get the total production cost. Production cost is over. So, let us see what is my answer. Uh, this is my budgeted production cost. So, for the company we are preparing one, one income statement therefore, I am not supposed to segregate what is the production cost for casual tables and luxury tables. I add them together and my total material requirement and labor cost, overhead cost with that my total production cost, expected cost is. 27,950,000. So, one step is over. How many functional budgets we have prepared? Sales revenue budgets, then production budget, material usage, material purchase, labor, overheads and we need to prepare these functional budgets finally to come up with the production cost, total production cost. Right. 
and once again go back to the income st statement structure, we need to finally identify our cost of goods sold. As this is the manufacturing company, how to calculate the cost of goods sold I indicated in the board, opening inventory plus production cost minus the closing inventory. Then api production budget take in production cost take ara gatta eka hari, by income statement take api devani item eka vidhiyata ganne vikunum pirivaya, tere vikunum pirivaya hada ganne one. කොහොමද විකුණුම් පිරිවය හදන්නේ ආරම්භක තොගයට අපි එකතු කරන්න ඕනේ මේ නිෂ්පාදන පිරිවය ඊට පස්සේ අවසන් තොගයක් තියෙනවා නම් ඒක අයින් කරලා දාන්න ඕනේ ඒ නිසා අපේ ඊගාව බජට් එක විදිහට අපි හදන්න ඕනේ විකුණුම් පිරිවය සොයා ගන්න that is the cost of goods sold budget so before moving into this cost of goods sold budget some workings have to be done. Why? Cost of goods sold equals opening inventory plus production cost minus closing inventory. I am writing them in short form. Now our production cost is ok, we have found it. What about the opening inventory of tables, have they given you information? Yes, they have given you, look the example, it is there. What about the closing inventory value, that has to be find, because we do not have information on what is the closing inventory value. We have 11,000 casual granite tables as the closing inventory. We have 500 luxury tables as the closing inventory. We need to value them. Only the units have been given. Therefore, dear students, to get that, what we have to do? Find what is the material cost per unit of each table labor cost per unit of each table and overhead cost per unit of each table and get the total manufacturing cost per each table and multiply it by the closing inventory, very simple. So go to my answer, this is how I have calculated the cost per each table because in the question it has been given for you, ne? per casual granite table, what is the red oak requirement, price per red oak board, fee, board foot, then the price per square foot of granite, everything have been given, just multiplying and get, you can get it, red oak total cost per casual granite table is 84 and luxury table is also 84 because to manufacture both the tables we use 12 board feet of red dock and granite multiply the number of board feet we need through the price per board foot and square foot, you can simply get the granite price per casual table and luxury table. I am not going to explain them in detail because they are very simple. Labor cost, in the question it has been given for you, how many hours per table, multiply by price per table, this is the labor cost per each unit and in the question they have given you overhead, manufacturing overhead cost per each unit separately, get them also and the total manufacturing cost per casual granite table is 384, per luxury table is 524, then what you are supposed to do? We need, we have 
we have 11,000 casual granite tables. Now, you know cost per casual granite table is 384. We have 11,000 casual granite tables as the closing inventory. Just multiply and get the value. And when it comes to the luxury tables, 524 is the manufacturing cost per table. What is the closing inventory of luxury tables? So, these are the closing inventory values. Now, it is all right. Production cost is over. We know the opening inventory. We know the production cost. We know the closing inventory and we can simply calculate the cost of goods sold. So, look at my answer. This is my cost of goods sold budget. Numbers are a bit large, but when you calculate them by yourselves, you will also get these same numbers. How did we calculate the cost of goods sold? Opening inventory, it is given in the question. Production cost, we got it from the production budget. Closing inventory, cost per table multiplied by the number of tables indicated in the closing inventory. In the question, you can see, they have given you. Here, look, target tending inventory in units, 11,000 casual granite tables and 500 luxury tables. Cost per table multiplied by the number of units in the closing inventory, that is it. Right, our functional budgets are over with that. Functional budgets are the liver, I any sadang up to LACM Hadan Puluang income statement taker. This is my income statement I have prepared. Number of furniture, budgeted income statement for the year ended 2020, maybe 31st December 2024. All these amounts from where I am taking from my previous functional budgets sales revenue from the sales budget, then the cost of goods sold from the cost of sales budget, I deduct it and this is my gross profit. And in the question they have given you, finally, distribution expenses are estimated to be 10 percent of sales and marketing expenses are 5 percent from sales. So, you get the expected sales revenue that is 38 million. Out of that, 10 percent is a distribution expenses, 5 percent for marketing expenses. Therefore, I can very easily uh, forecast that as well. Normally, these kind of expenses, distribution expenses, admin expenses, they are given dear students as a part or as a percentage of the expected revenue. So, I have received my answers like this, deduct them, you can put them within brackets and finally, my expected profit is 8,190,000 here in this simple example. I have not adjusted taxes, expected taxes or interest or I have not made it complex. So, through sales driven budgets, what I wanted to emphasize is we have many functional budgets to be prepared to come up to the master budgets. And here your closing inventory value, here this is your closing inventory now, this will be taken to the statement of financial position under current assets, closing inventory. I am not going to prepare my statement of financial position, budgeted is so FP because we need further more information and it will be more complex then. Within this limited time, it is difficult for us to prepare everything. So, keep in mind in sales driven budgets, 
this is our flow. We need to prepare master budgets for that. We have series of functional budgets to be prepared. Okay. Enang api sales driven budgets wala monadi gana gatte. Manki api master budgets. Basically api hadanawa budgeted income statement teka. Adayam prakashe. Eva gema balance sheet teka. Shesha patreta take the information amashe vena. Ito kodam me master budget sadan nanang api functional budget series saka khadan noni. A vishesha manish padane karana. Aitana valeta. Yalage vikunum. अपि पुरो कतने कलाट पासे विकुनुम फोकास्ट सेल्स फोकास्ट कलाट पासे कुछ रख निष्पादने करान नोने द मटेरियल समुद्रावे संधा कुछ रख वेदमाक क्या नवाद अमुद्रावे कुछ रख कोने द ए संधा यान वेदम मुकाक्त इट पासे श्रम पीरिवाय कुछ रख द इट पासे प्रोडक्शन ओवरहेड्स वक्र पीरिवाय वक्र निष्पादन पीरिवाय में हम दे म अपिटा functional budgets हदन विनवा master budgets वेटर इन्ह कोटर माहितान ने ओगलों उन्टा मेटिक पहले किया ला so all in all we have come to the final learning objective of this lesson what is the final learning objective do you remember I have shown you look this is my final learning objective for you all to fulfill from this lesson Prepare sales driven and the cash driven budgets. We have done all. We have completed our final learning objective as well. So, with that, dear students, basically we have covered all these four learning objectives. And additionally, I want to explain y'all, explain with y'all bit on are there any disadvantages of preparing budgets also? Now, uh, these disadvantages of preparing budgets actually the companies felt during this prevailing economic crisis in Sri Lanka because we could see quick and the large changes of inflation, interest rates, quick fluctuations of the exchange rates. Because of these unfavorable economic conditions, actually the budgets prepared by the managers were out of dated dear students. Therefore, budgets will be directly influenced with the prevailing economic situations also. Therefore, if your budgets will not be flexible that much, your budgets will be out of dated if external environmental factors will directly be affected on you. And also, simply Initially also I discussed with you when you prepare budgets it takes time, it takes cost. That is also one of a disadvantage of preparing budgets. And also few more I have given you all. When you prepare budgets as the manager you have to always monitor whether my operational level employees, other managers are they working are they committing on achieving the targets always monitor you have to do it so it takes time and the cost as well further through budgets if you give unrealistic targets to your employees they will of course be demotivated because if they do not have the capacity to achieve those targets they will be frustrated so basically, these are few of the disadvantages of preparing budgets. तो कुछ budget साधारणतः हदने के आवासित ये ना, माँगा रखा लिंक क्यों बाबा के budget साधारण विला वाया ना माँ, cost का क्या ना माँ, ये वाके में budget से काफी आपे employees लाडे targets देना वाला मिच्छरक निष्पादने करान नॉने, अ मिच्छरक promote करान नॉने, में वाके revenue बहेकटे अन्नॉने, ते ये वाके targets समाहर विला वट Achieve karan amaru na. Employees lat echra capacity kaak netta. Api prayogi kawa hitala neve na nge targets denne employees lat tadama kalakire na ma frustrate venao. Teva game maang kalinkiwa vage yara 
අපේ ආර්ථික තත්ත්වය ඉන්ෆ්ලේෂන් එක උද්දමනය එතකොට එක්ස්චේන්ජ් රේට්ස් විනිමය අනුපාත ඒ වගේම පොලී අනුපාත නිතර නිතර වෙනස් වෙනවා නම් අපේ බජට්ස් අවුට් ඔෆ් ඩේටඩ් ඒ කියන්නේ ප්‍රැක්ටිකල් නැතුව ඒවා එක්ස්පයර් වෙන තත්ත්වයට පත් වෙනවා ඒවා තමයි අයබය සකස් කිරීමේ අවාසි විදිහට තියෙන්නේ නමුත් ඉතින් අයබය සකස් කිරීමේ වාසි අවාසි වලට වඩා ගොඩක් වැඩි and also in budgeting i told you budget act as a controlling mechanism do you remember budget itself act as planning as well as controlling mechanisms so in terms of this controlling in budgeting we can see basically feedback control and the feed forward control what do you mean by feed back control this one feedback control go to the initially what i have discussed under aims of budgeting your expected sales revenue is 100000 and you actually ended up with the 50000 revenue you identified a variance do you remember here also i have told you you expected to have 120000 but you actually ended up with 100000 and unfavorable variance of 20000 so what you do you find out the reasons get the solution and you control the environment to make sure that this issue this default won't be happen in the next year what you have done as the manager you have done a detective action detective feedback control ekke di mokada wenne api budgets ape actual ekka compare karala then attarama performance iwarai e hinda atta budget ekat ekka compare karala prashnayak tiyenawa nan e prashne igawa para wennathi wenna detective action ekak ganna ekak thama feedback control kiyala kiyanne හැබැයි ෆීඩ් ෆෝවර්ඩ් කන්ට්‍රෝල් එකක් කියලා කියන්නේ ළමයි ඉස්සරහට මෙහෙම ප්‍රශ්නයක් වෙන්න පුළුවන් කියලා හිතලා දැම්මම ඒ ප්‍රශ්නෙ නොවෙන්න වග බලා ගන්න ඇක්ෂන් එකක් ගන්නවා ඒකට අපි කියනවා ප්‍රිවෙන්ටිව් ඇක්ෂන් එකක් කියලා දැන් උදාහරණයක් විදිහට ඕගොල්ලන්ට මතකද මම අර කැෂ් බජට් එකක් හදන්න ඕනේ ඇයි කියලා පැහැදිලි කරද්දි මම කිව්වා අපි යම් කිසි කාලයක් අවසානයේ මගේ කම්පැනි එකේ තියෙන ඕනේ රුපියල් 60000 කියලා කැෂ් බජට් එක හදලා අපි අයිඩෙන්ටිෆයි කරගන්නවා. ඒ වගේම මට ප්‍රොජෙක්ට් එක කරන්න රුපියල් ලක්ෂයක් යනවා නම් හරි. 60000ක් තියෙවිනේ බජට් එක හදලා බැලුවම 60000ක් තියෙනවා. ඒ නිසා ඉතුරු 40000 හොයා ගන්නේ කොහොමද කියලා මම දැම්මම ප්ලෑන් කරනවා. ඒක ප්‍රිවෙන්ටිව් ඇක්ෂන් එකක්. ප්‍රශ්නයක් එන්න කලින් මම කලින් ඉඳලම ප්ලෑන් කරනවා. Therefore in terms of feed forward control what's happening? What you do? You are controlling the environment before a problem is being occurred. And try to solve any matter which might be faced in the future from now onwards. As I have explained you that is not a detective action that is a preventive action therefore always preventive actions are better than detective action prashnaya kawata passe ekata visanduma hoyanna try karnawata wada wadagat wenne prashne enna kalin ekata muna denne kohomada kiyala api plan karaganna eka therefore in budgeting nowadays this feed forward control is very popular Yes. So with that, all in all, as a summary, what we have discussed so far, mainly our four learning objectives: what is the budget? How can we define the budget? What are the aims of budgeting? And basically, we have learned a few classifications of budgets in terms of top-down versus bottom-up, fixed versus flexible. incremental budgets and the zero based budgeting 
and based on what are the different budgets that companies are preparing, we moved on to cash driven and the sales driven budgets. So with that dear students, I will conclude the session for today and thank you very much. Have a nice day for you.